Welcome back, everybody, to my Ace Recording Studio. This is John Delarose, Delarose.com. That's D E L A R R O Z.com. And you can head to the link in my description below, sign up for my newsletter, get a free graphic novel from me. I also have a book on Indiegogo right now. It's called Deus Volt. And if you want the opposite of the Scarlet Witch, which I'm about to get into, actual writing that's competent with consistent art a good book, go back to useful. It's in the description below also. Support the channel, read good books. All right, this is the biggest dumpster fire of a book I've read in a long time. I try not to read books I don't like, and I try not to review books I don't like, just because I just want to do something a little different. But I picked this one up because I saw that there was a kind of a tie-in to Jason Aaron's Doctor Strange, which is really good. I'll be reviewing that soon. And... Uh, I also saw that it was $13 on Amazon when it has a uh, $34.99 price. So they were selling this at below cost. And I think it was a glitch on Amazon or they're remaindering this book even prior to it coming out. This was the pre-order price. So it's kind of crazy. So I saw this. I'm like, whatever, $13 for a book this thick. This is, uh, this is about the best deal you'll get. All right. But I screwed up because this is 2016 Marvel. And... If you remember 2016 Marvel, this is the worst of Marvel comics across the line. They almost tanked their entire line during this era. Uh, contains Scarlet Witch 1 through 15 and Doctor Strange, The Last Days of Magic, which is uh, in that Jason Aaron collection already. So it's kind of, it doesn't even star Scarlet Witch. I don't know why it's in here. So James Robinson's the writer here, who I'm not familiar with other than this work. So sorry, James, if you watch this, but man, uh, this, this needed some help. So... Part of the issue with this also is you see all these artists on this book. For 15 issues worth of work, uh, you know, that's a lot of different artists. There's there's some that are good. Uh, Vanessa uh, R. Del Rey at the beginning and the end are, was actually very good. Uh, Sean Crystal, number 14, did a good job. But some of them are awful, too. And I don't know which is which uh, through here. There's just too many uh, changes. It's just highly inconsistent all the way through here on the artists, and you see the colorists are all different for this too. It's like, wow, they could not keep an artist on this book. I don't know what they were attempting to do with this, but man. So part of this starts out with the Scarlet Witch, um, and uh, she's just having dreams and nightmares and all that, and this is a, you know, sort of an introspective sort of thing where she's trying to find herself and find out what's going on. Now, there's a few, there's a couple plot lines to this. There's, there's the, like, find her internal self, find the true history of her family and witches. And then there's like this level progression where she's just like going from place to place every single issue where it's a different place, a different fight. And it, it uh, at the end, he tries to tie it all together, sort of, and it doesn't, doesn't really, you know, half these issues are just completely irrelevant to the story. Uh, it, it's really bizarre. So that's what the first thing to do is when you're writing a like 15 page maxi series or whatever it is, or 15 issue maxi series, you don't like do that like level thing where every single, every single one is like a new villain in a new place. Like it, it's just like, it's so tired right away. The other thing I'm sick of is like magic is sick. And there's a sickness in the magic we have to cure. It's like mutant powers are sick. And we, you know, it's like, I've seen that so many times before. It's a little rough. So you don't care about that. So all you're left with is this like character progression of Wanda and her like background uh, of whatever. Now, I have not read any more modern Marvel for the most part. I thought that Magneto was uh, her and Pietro's father or whatever. I guess they've retconned and changed that. And, uh, you get you know, you get brief reference of that in here. Now I know why they did that. It's because they were trying to write out the X Men from the Marvel universe, basically because uh, Sony had the rights to the movies, and so they're trying to like build this new universe. So this is issue two. Uh, Who did this art? It was fantastic. Who did this one? Uh, Marco Rudy. Look at that. That's pretty cool art. Um, I love I I love these little like watercolory like colors, also. Um, this was pretty good. So in the first couple of issues, you're, you're getting established. Wanda's like not feeling right. And she's uh, going out and she's hunting these bad witches in places. And that's all good. Uh, pretty, pretty enjoyable at that point. Issue three, the, the art um, kind of goes a little in a different direction, which doesn't quite work as well. And it feels a lot stiffer than usual compared to uh, what we saw before. We saw these elegant flowing colors before. That's all gone here. So now she's fighting in Ireland uh, against these, like, you know, 
witches that are coming up. And then at the very end of it, we switch artists again. So very odd. Um, that leads into this like witches road thing where I guess there's like this like astral plane of witches or something like that where she has to go through. Um, and this is pretty neat. Uh, it's a little less detailed than some of the other art at the beginning. Not quite as good still, not quite as colorful. So you, you kind of lose that in here. And then it gets really uh, obnoxious. So it's like they, they got you in like with this storyline where there's like there's there's something coming. There's something coming and we're four issues in and there's still come something coming. So you're starting to lose your patience at this point because there's not much going on. And um, here we go with art that is <laughs> a big step down from the first few issues here. So you get this little bait and switch at this point. And at this point, uh, it gets really offensive. So you've gotten, unfortunately, like these male writers who write women characters all the time, and, and even some of the women writers at this point at Marvel, always like make these anytime it's a female character like they have to like just be like i'm a woman and i'm oppressed and and you're a man and you need to shut up and every single time it's that and it's so tired it is so tired this one takes it a step further where the catholic priest is like uh you're a witch and that's bad and she's like oh, i'm a good witch actually and uh and she 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 talks down this catholic priest and then the nun like goes against the priest and like tells him to go away and he and he acts like he's an idiot and a buffoon going away. This is just like this is crazy right right then. I'm sorry if my being a witch upsets him. You're a woman, Wanda, and you have the power in the world. You're known. It's like oh my gosh, <laughs> terrible dialogue uh, all the way around. But it's just like it's just a very anti-Catholic bent in this when they're uh, when when actually the Catholic nun is opposed to the Catholic Church in this and. Uh, there we go. And a uh, very odd theological statement at the end here where she goes, uh, it's like he did no research on Catholicism and he hates Christians or something, uh, where she wanted to ask about being a witch. And she says, I'm very much a bride of Christ. Like my savior, I keep an open mind on all things. Uh, open mind on all things was not the biblical message. Never happened. So very, very bizarre. And none would never say that. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we get this, uh, this terrible art while she goes through Spain and, uh, then we get uh, several pages with no dialogue. At least it goes faster because a lot of, like, there's a ton of dialogue exposition in this, which is, the, which I'll get to later because it gets really bad in the later issues. So at least we get to pass this art really fast because there's not that much going on and she solves the little witch problem in Spain and leaves. All right. Thank God. I think we're on issue six now. We're already seven minutes into this. I got to go a little faster, but there's there's very little that happens in these books. The art's taken kind of a downturn for the most part. And we go through the, just one scenario after another. Um, oh, uh, I guess this is a character that was introduced in that Doctor Strange series. So there was one issue that it kind of tied in. And Wanda deals with the issues in China. She deals with the issues in Eastern Europe. She deals with the issues in Africa. She just goes all over. Every single issue is one different than the next. This one uh, started off interesting. She goes to a psychologist uh, to deal with her, like, whatever problems. Uh, she talks, and we start getting into Wanda's past a little bit, which, again, conflicts with the rest of Marvel history. It's like they're they're trying really hard to deal with this. But, again, this breaks down at this point where Wanda's just talking. There's just, like, there's a whole issue of just talking, and this is, this is what happens in the back half of the series is you get that. It turns out the psychologist was manipulating her, but Wanda knew all along. Uh, and so he goes to jail. Was, there was very, uh, nothing much happened to that issue. Um, we get back here. This is a Civil War II issue. We get very different art that does not match the rest of the series at all. But but this is very good art. Whoever did this one. I think it's Joelle Jones. Is that right? Nine. Yeah, Joelle Jones. Yeah, she actually is a good artist. So, um, you know, like I said, some of the issues are good art. Others are not good. This one, she just uh, yells at Pietro, her brother, the Quicksilver, the entire time because he's wanting to join uh, part of this Civil War II thing. And they have a little fight for like two pages. But again, it's just all talking other than that. There's nothing that happens. Uh, and then she's mad at Pietro, but he comes back later in the series. And then she's not mad at him all of a sudden. Just like very weird stuff. Here's one. She goes to Japan. Art's pretty good in this one, too. But again, like, she deals with this witch problem in Japan. Look at all the talking. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, talk. And then, like, it's like, oh, I better get some action at the end of the issue real quick. I mean, at least there was a little in this one compared to some of the others. But, man, um, every single issue starts to get formatted like this. Talk, 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 talk. Talk, talk. 
Talk Talks, Talking Heads. They go into the background of things a little bit, and they kind of break up the Talking Heads a little bit, but uh, it's just, just a trick, because we're just going to talk some more. And again, all of these stories at this point are just like, man, man dumb, woman smart, man, you are mansplaining, and it's, it's really cringy uh, dialogue all the way through this stuff. So we start to learn about her origin. I guess she's like got some witch mother from like Eastern Europe or whatever, who's a, like sort of gypsy sort of deal. And she meets an aunt who is also a gypsy sort of deal who burned in a fire, but she was not burned as a witch. Even though they tried to kill her, she failed. And the art gets inconsistent again. And lots of talking. Lots of talking. And I guess this then at the end of the talking, like it's like they needed to add some action at the end of the issue. So they had a demon possess her real quick. And then that's gone. But then they decide they have to go back on the witch's road to find her mother to really find the cause of all the problems of magic. So again, you could have skipped like all of this and then they go right back to that witch's road again uh, for these last couple of issues. Like, oh, it's time to wrap up. We have these like, we're going to Serbia now. We're going to Japan now. We're going to this now, but now it's time to wrap up. So this is the problem with decompression in comics these days. Very slow going, very painful to read all this stuff. And then it gets okay again. Uh, so this is actually worth reading. If you look at this issue 13, the art's really good through here. Look at this cool, cool little scenery through here. So it's not all bad, but it's like, again, it's like it's like they just stalled this out intentionally to drag it out, and I don't know why. Um, but they go on the witch's road, and they find her mother, who's her real mother. And I don't, you know, again, the continuity, like, I don't get it. Um, and they, this kind of gets decompressed a little bit through here again. The writing's just, like, painful. Um... And, but look at the art on this. This, for this, for this one, the art is freaking good. Wow. I guess it made it worth it on, on those. I like this. This is my favorite page of the whole book right here. Very cool. All right. So we're at 14 and they're on the witch's road. And here's again, the, some more of the, the bad writing. So we've got, of course, the mother, the uh, maiden and the crone, right? So of course, here we are, the classic witch's creo, the maiden, the mother and the crone. <laughs> it's like... You don't have to spell that out. It's a cliche. It's obvious. All right. Um, but they go through their little witches uh, thing. Again, beautiful art in this issue too. I, I like I like bright colors. Uh, I hate it when the dark colors like muddy things down. Uh, like a, like a few issues of this, uh, you know, you get the muddy colors and they're just not interesting to look at. When it, this is interesting to look at. And there's some demon in there. Cause it's called chaos causing sickness in the magic, and they have to combine their powers together. And then for some reason, Pietro shows up, and he starts running, and for some reason, the running uh, stops the bad guy uh, in his tracks. So, but, it, you know, she needed the closure from Pietro, I guess. I guess that's why they... I don't know. All these things, like, the elements are here. It's like, oh, we better fix the Pietro thing. We better, we better reveal who the mother is. We better reveal the family history. Um, it feels like they're just trying too hard to have reveals, um, and try to set up these reveals that you don't really care about throughout the entire thing because it's just set up so poorly. So uh, you don't have to do big character reveals and do all the... The art gets weird and wonky again here at the end of this. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, and then we have a full issue of, of she's back. Like on the first issue, she was doing a demon possession sort of thing. And she does it again where she deals with this demon possession. Again, with the muddy colors that make it really tough to look at here. I get it's a style, but like it's... Man... Not nice to look at compared to the other stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, this whole deal again, like, don't be don't be so quick to judge witches. It's like, geez, gosh, it's like, I don't know. Is that the hill? Is that the moral of the story for real? Don't be so quick to judge witches. The whole deal is she's fighting bad witches who are, are throughout this entire thing. She's like, I better take care of the bad witches. I, it doesn't make sense. Nothing, nothing lines up. There's no, like, payoff here. Nothing feels good about the whole thing, and it just resets. The writing is just atrocious. Um, and then there's a... Uh, this comes from the Doctor Strange uh, one-shot where they re where they uh, go over, I guess, the origin of that uh, character from that one issue. So there it is. Oh, my gosh. I could rant about this for hours, but I, I respect your time too much for that. So I try to keep this about 15 minutes just because... Whew. Oh, I, 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 there's so many more cringy dialogue spots. There's so much bad pacing in here that this is really uh, just one of the worst books I've ever read. It, it really is. Uh, this is a primer on how not to write comics. All right. Hit that like and subscribe button. Bye. <laughs>